So what's needed as we go through this training? I think the first thing we need is balance. It's possible that the definition of mindfulness gives us the impression that mindfulness means living in the present moment only, without thoughts about the future and eliminating all of the automatic patterns of thinking. And you know what? Mindfulness really is about balance. Example, there's nothing wrong with goal setting. So goals can provide direction, motivation, and a meaning towards the future state. However, problems actually occur when the balance between the goals and the present moment are lost. In this case, it's possible that we're focusing so much on reaching our goals that we forget to live in the present moment. Our lives can become a sequence of goals and our mind is consciously and consistently living in the future and we really actually enjoy the present. Now this can easily lead to frustration, especially when we notice that we fail to reach our goals you know, in a specific time span or, or maybe not even reach them at all. And so mindfulness helps us to become aware that living in the present moment is the key to reaching our goals. By focusing our attention on the present, we often become more efficient and effective in terms of goal achievement. The same principle of balance applies to automatic behavior. So in some cases, automatic behavior are very helpful, like driving a car, writing, or making gestures, you know, all examples of how we might do things automatically. However, in some cases, automatic patterns can have unwanted behaviors, like responding aggressively when you receive criticism, or automatically starting to worry when, you know, we see in a situation as negative. In these cases, mindfulness can help us to become more aware that the automatic patterns are there and that we can you know, start to build space to change them and create more balance between what's helping us and what's not helping us. And so mindfulness is a way of dealing with and perceiving reality. It can help us to provide insights. Not by means of conflict or fighting, but by cultivating an open attitude and being more accepting. It offers a different way of relating to reality than maybe we might have been accustomed to. So we're going to need practice. You know, mindfulness is for the mind what gym is to the body. And so research has actually showed that mindfulness is a natural human capacity. And it can be experienced by pretty much anybody. Now, mindfulness can also be trained. And so research has shown that meditation practice enhances mindfulness and thereby promotes psychological health. So as we consider practicing, the training will probably be most effective when you practice when you're at home, in the comfort of your own home. And probably 30 to 60 minutes per day. Now that doesn't mean it has to be 30 to 60 minutes in one. We can actually do different types of exercises which include formal and informal daily practices, which can be as little as three or maybe even less minutes. And then we can also have some longer practice sessions, which might take up to 30 minutes. So with your permission, I'd like to suggest some recommended attitudes for this process. We should be as mindful as possible whilst progressing through the training, reducing any distractions and being present so that your attention is 100% in the here and the now. That includes switching off mobile phones and, and any other distractions. The element of compassion and kindness is very important, both to yourself and to others. Especially if you may have some challenges in being here and doing the exercises. We often beat ourselves up and I suggest being kind and compassionate to yourself. And as you go through the practice, you know, really give it a go. Have fun with the home experiments. Now, you might decide to adopt an attitude of, you know what, I'm going to do my best with an open mind. And then at the end of the training, I'm going to decide, hey, how will I implement this into my daily life? After all, it's only eight weeks. So imagine the potential benefits that it might have on your physical, emotional and relational well-being. You know, the goal of mindfulness interventions is to teach those who are, who are practicing it to become aware of the body sensations, 
our thoughts and our emotions, to relate to them with an open, non-judgmental attitude. An open state like this can be cultivated by repeated practice. Remember that mindfulness is related to, but does not equal meditation. And so there's various exercises that you can do. Now, during your home practice, you will need a quiet space to focus and to practice. A place where you won't be disturbed. Find a space where you could sit or lay down comfortably and with the right temperature. Meaning that you might have a blanket to keep you warm if it was cool. Or if it was really warm, that you have a window open or some air movement. You want to be in comfortable, non-restrictive clothing to allow free movement. You may wish to read some of the poems and the suggested materials. If you choose, have a notepad or journal and a pen to you know, capture all of your experiences. And ask yourself, how did you feel before and after the mindfulness practice? What worked for you? What didn't work for you? Reflect on learnings after every session. What did you notice in your body? What thought patterns or emotional reactions arose? What are you grateful for? What benefits are you finding through the personal practice of mindfulness? What benefits are you enjoying through the program? What did you discover? Reflecting daily on your experiences. Record your insights straight after doing the techniques. Remember that's private. So be honest and kind to yourself in your comments. You'll need patience and persistence. Don't resist the resistance. Accept that if a thought has come up, that it came up. Just let it be. Remember what you resist persists. So be kind to yourself and let whatever happens, happen. So mindfulness is learning to become mindful. We program to be focused on whatever we do. And so as we learn mindfulness, we are reprogramming our mind. Don't strive for perfection. Just let things be. In becoming aware that your mind is wandering, you're already practicing mindfulness. So let your mind simply return from its wandering journey. The wandering mind is a normal and natural thing. Did you know in the study of neuroplasticity, we know that the things we keep thinking about and keep doing will create deeper neural pathways. So the more you practice mindfulness, the easier it will become and the more you'll be able to be present in your experience. So cultivate softness and caring in your heart. Stop being self-deprecating and practice curiosity and openness to what's happening in your mind. Mindfulness isn't about distracting or suppressing emotion, or even about avoidance of thoughts. And the effects of your efforts will not always be immediately evident. It may require an investment of time and effort for change. Compare it to gardening. You need to prepare the soil, plant the plants, water the plants, and wait patiently for the plants to grow. So take time to do the own practice and do it to the best of your ability. I'd suggest some tips by keeping your workbook in a clearly visible place. That'll help you to you know, remind you to do your training on a daily basis. Decide when and where you're going to practice. So create a method that will deliver and help to drive that automatic behavior in this case, to automatically build this habit of daily practice. So example, maybe every evening after you do the dishes or in the morning before you wake up. You, know, you might choose to do it in your bedroom. Or you've got a spare room. So there's various models that we're going to look at as we go through the training. The models point to reality, but they're not the same thing as reality. Just like the word hat is not actually the reality of a hat. Reality is reality. And so the modules presented are simply modules. The reality is far too complex to be completely translated into words or concepts or figures or modules. 
Reality is something that we only experience in the here and the now. And so the models and the words and the concepts, they help to create the experience, but they can never actually be the real experience in and of itself. Remember that each person's reality is your own perception of it. And as you go through the modules and through the practices, do it without judgment. We're very used to judging everything and everyone around us. We compare present experiences with past and future experiences. We experience something and we automatically start thinking what the experience means or whether it's good or bad. The process of judgment prevents us from being fully present in the here and the now. And so we see the present moment through this lens of judgment. So trying not to judge is like trying not to think of a white polar bear. The more we try not to think about the white polar bear, the more you think about it. It's enough to become aware of the judgment. And so during the practice, notice when your mind judges and then direct attention in a compassionate way back to the practice. Now, mindfulness is about endlessly starting over again, again and again and again. Once you get distracted during the practice, gently redirect your attention back again. You'll do this many times over. In fact, it's part of the exercise. In this way, we're actually training this redirection of attention, which is a crucial aspect of attention regulation. Mindfulness cultivates this open awareness, which is a hallmark of the beginner's mind. It's as if we look at reality for the first time, like a young child who experiences something for the first time. And as you go through this training, do it without striving. You know, the thing with mindfulness is there's no goal to achieve in doing the exercises, which might sound strange. You know, people participate, they do mindfulness trainings because they wish to achieve the goal of worrying less or experiencing less stress or less pain or whatever it might be. The exercises aim to cultivate awareness of the present. And so the awareness of the present can never be a goal because goals always related to the future. The problem is that we may start doing the exercises because of a goal. Like, I'm going to meditate because I want to become calm and relaxed. The goal then not only focuses our attention on the future, we may also become aware during the exercise that we're not achieving the goal fast enough. The goal of mindfulness is not to achieve a goal, but to be present in whatever happens in the present moment. So paradoxically, this type of awareness has been linked to several positive health-related outcomes, but can only be cultivated in the present with a future detached mindset and so we need to practice acceptance by perceiving reality as it is in the first place acceptance is about acknowledging what is present you know, in general we often see what we don't want to see and what we do want to see differently we devote a lot of time to denying what's there Consequently, we waste a lot of precious energy by resisting something that cannot be changed in the first place. During the practice, both pleasant and unpleasant situations, emotions and thoughts may arise. Instead of denying them and pushing them away, mindfulness requires a willingness to let them be as they are in the present moment. Remember that the goal of mindfulness is not to get rid of these internal states, but to change your relationship with the states. And mindfulness cultivates a friendlier, acceptance-based relationship with the internal states. In other words, when the unpleasant states arise, we try to welcome them and perceive them as part of the exercise and part of reality, letting them be as they are. We can let go of positive and negative experiences. You know, sometimes we have positive experiences, people try to hold on to them. We attempt to prolong the duration and make them last longer. Uh, open awareness means detachment from all events. In fact, when we try to change the course of the positive experience, 
we're doing the same thing as when we're trying to push away the negative states. In both cases, we try to alter the reality instead of experiencing it in an open, detached attitude. It's enough to observe and give the positive experience room to follow its natural course. The more freedom you provide for experiences to occur, the more freedom you'll actually experience. And you need compassion. Don't be angry at yourself when you get distracted during the exercises. Thoughts and feelings will always ar arise. It's just how the mind works. It likes to wander. Every mind operates like this. Your mind's no exception. Awareness in this moment provides the opportunity to direct attention back to the exercise in a gentle, compassionate way. So be kind to yourself when you notice pain or anger or fear or whatever sensation you notice. Be kind when you notice that maybe you judge or you get distracted or that your mind wants to avoid the pain. Simply practice it. Open, friendly awareness.